evening, ladies and gentlemen. I notice you all are having a great time with the net team tonight. That is the purpose of this event. Off the camera style. I'd love to have you all sit down for a moment. Lots of opportunities to connect. So chant in the room. It's fantastic. Uh -huh. I know you all talk about this high school, you know. It's pretty cool. No worries. We are just alumni, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Burgess Night School Alumni Association. I would like to extend a very warm welcome to you to this year's reunion in New York at this lovely facility. Don't you think so? Yeah. Yeah. We have a very short program to allow sufficient time for you to mingle and reconnect with your pals and the other generations of DHS Islands. This is time to do so. I only know the 60s and 70s, but I see 80s and 90s here tonight. Welcome. I'd like to thank the organizers, particularly Prithi Raj, Shelley, and Anita, for securing this nonprofit organization in Georgia. Mr. Shane Persan. And our beloved. Vice President, Mr. Privy Rand Singh, a former BHS teacher. Thanks to him, we've gotten most of you here tonight. We really appreciate it. We have Michelle Reed, Octavia. She does a lot of stuff behind the scenes, and we'd like you to recognize her. She's with her husband. We have dear Shelly Singroy, Community Outreach. Shelly, what a dynamic person. Oh my God. Thank you. We really appreciate what you've done for us tonight, Shelly. Maintain the continuity for the That's fabulous. Anita Diaz, entrepreneur, all Merlin Brandon. Is Merlin here tonight? Oh, yeah. Never mind, but when Merlin gets here, she is not only a board member, she's a sponsor of a scholarship. So we'd like to welcome her when she does arrive. Tony Supran. Tony, where are you? Extremely proud of you and 
We look forward to following your footsteps. Amen. Can we have more than one sponsor? Come on, you can sponsor more than one. Make me happy. Thanks again. And I would like tonight we didn't get a chance to sell some tickets when you came in because you're so gracious. We will have an opportunity to wrap off some books and many other things there that Shane and Chef and the show will tell you. Once again, I'm so excited to see you. So, Shane.
couple years ago when she passed away unexpectedly, we decided as a board to start a scholarship in her name. His life as a young student at BHS and how that experience changed and affected his life. So without further ado, if I could introduce Mr. Bacchus, come on up. Before, as, as he's coming up, how many of you bought raffle tickets tonight? Raise your hand. Thank you. If you'd like to buy more raffle tickets, we have several door prizes that we're going to pick with our tickets. Who's got the tickets? You want to sound some more? While Mr. Bacchus is going to start. Microphone closer to your lips. Thank you. Hi, Ralph, here you are. That buddy needs a large order. Uh, listen, I gotta, I'm gotta. i going next door because I love to dance salsa. Alright, so I'm going to do the best I can. I wrote my speech because it took me, I got 10 minutes to do the best I can. So here's, this, here's how we go. I'm an old boy of BHS. Now I'm an older boy. I was not a popular boy. I was not smart either. I was just one of the guys that didn't fit in. I was shy, part of my upbringing, the way I, the way I was then. I'm not that man. So I was touched the heart that remembered me because I don't think anybody remembered me. But, uh, so my name is Bob Bacchus, and let me explain the name situation. When I was born, my father didn't look at me and say, I got my Rocky Boy. Okay? I didn't get that name until I came to America. A lot of people couldn't pronounce foreign names. So what they did, they gave me a name. I, I went to school in the day for engineering. I worked at night in a supermarket packing shelves. The guy, the boss guy came to me and said, uh, can we call you Ralph? We can't pronounce my name. How could it? I'm not here for the name calling, I'm here for the money. So I'm packing shelves. He sends a guy to get me to go pack a different shelf. And then the guy at the end of the aisle says, Ralph. Packing shelves. He says, Well, forget a little lot. I'm packing shelves. Finally, the guy came and tapped me on the shoulder and said, Are you proud? I said, Yeah, but I forgot my name. I just got it. What do you expect? Anyhow, um, the name followed me to job after job after job. When I went to get my citizenship, I told the man, I got records of different names. I want to make one name. What can I do? He said, if you want to change your name to George Washington, that was okay. So I said, uh, you know what? Uh, do I want to be named after a president or a bridge? I'll take Ralph. So my Ralph is my official name, just so you know. The last name is Packers. Anyhow, first of all, let me say thanks to all the people who contributed to this event. We're here for the uh, cause of the uh, alumni. A special thanks to Sir Roach. Sir Roach, where are you? Uh, she was my... She was my first contact when I was able to reach back. So, please. Anyhow, um, so now I check the read out of it. 
So my thanks also to Brother Martin, because he helped me with uh, telling me about the mission of the alumni. And also, Pukki I don't know where he is. Um, my thanks to him for helping with the whole process. So we're all here together for a uh, good cause. Um, I would say to, to go to a wonderful high school, the place where so many of us have walked along the same path. We can't forget the years. And I count myself lucky because I was there and I went to BHS. It was a place where we all gained knowledge to pursue further education. It was a time when we all learned behavior, discipline, sometimes the hard way in the principal's office. Yeah, I've been there, hard enough to be there too. <laughs> Probably at the same time. I thank my dear mother for registering me at BHS. I still remember that day. And I followed my father, I would have been a ghost man there with 20 kids and 5,000 grandkids running around. I know many of the names of the uh, scholarships as well as the teachers like the Harry Butcher, Moosey, Broad School System, Herman Baptist, who was supposed to be here but he's not here. Uh, Mr. Doyle, I remember Mr. Baloney, the French teacher, and the other French teacher, Ms. Thomas. I often sat in the back bench with the uh, cool dudes like McLaren and Arjun. We'll go to town with Arjun and he will order, he go to a shop and order beers. And then the guy will look at him and say, you're in school uniform. Uh, and he said, more beers. Of course, there's this thing that he calls poetry. And how to interpret poetry. How you can paint a picture of your author's mind in the reader's mind. And which is like paint, uh, writing a thousand words. I came to New York to go to college for electrical engineering. After that, I became a professional in digital infrastructure technology and a pilot instructor. I have since my thousand hours in the classroom and in the flight. Most of my hours are teaching, but that's all I came to do. Um, I flew only for fun, but one and the ear to some of the people such as the family of Roman Marcus. Anyhow, uh, I think we'll ask the audience here, what do you think? Are we good? Are we good? The UN career didn't happen, so it was just, it was just a dream out of gold. I discovered I didn't like flying all pilots anyway. So, I came full circle back to the place where it started. I've written two books. I write in bite-sized portions. The books are available here for sale. The first book is about my life in Guyana and coming to New York and living a life, the dream, the American dream, which I did, I think, in my own mind. And the second book is about my books are both titled Being a Human Being. And it's about us as a human species and about the issues that we deal with every day. And some of the things that we don't even think about because we don't. So I want to ask you this. The profession I was in was digital infrastructure, which is what's behind the motor. Most of us know what's in front of the motor, or why they're singing. The word motor is not a name, it's an acronym. It means modulator, demodulator. In book one, you'll get to see what that is. You'll get to read what that is. So, the green book is book one. The green book is book one. The red book is hot, it's book two. This one is about the front street of human existence. Who we are, what we are, what we are. Book one, you will learn about things. You need your money's work first of all, because I wrote about things that we know, but we don't think about them. Like motor. What is an LED lighting? It's light emitting dialogue. 
What is GPS? It's Global Positioning System. So, in book two, I write about the atomic clock. The most accurate clock on the planet. It's not made in Switzerland. It's made by the American. And every single one of them lose time while they're in space. That's explained over there as well. Okay, now, I don't know what I'm going to say. I'll tell you what, a limited number of the books are here. Okay. The salesman is right there. Get your copy now, I'm here. And I have to tell you that I need to read my signature. If you do, okay with me. But um, if you can't get the book here, you can buy it online. Just get the number on the back of the book. I'm going to ask you all to do two things. If you buy the book, please read it on Amazon. I have a shirt yet shot. The back of the book is a picture of an iconic picture. And there is a, a, a famous movie made where you get one of the themes of the book. Okay? The picture was taken before they made the movie. So, I have, I have two phrases that I come by myself about book two. There are a lot of themes in this book. Many, many themes. One of them is about time. What time really is. How do you think about it? We can buy time, we can lose time, we can gain time, or we can never sell time. We can go to one direction. So book two, another thing is two books that I've came up with. First one, arrogance plus ignorance equals stupidity. And the second one is stupidity plus Testosterone equals catastrophe. Okay, so whatever you think of that. And I like to hear the thing, I understand that. I'm not even sure I can hear it myself, but I hear music over there, I'm going over there, I'm going to dance my ass out somewhere. Thank you all very much. It's
It is 107 years old, having been established by the Presbyterian Missionary Society, which had invited the Presbyterian Church of Canada to come and work in British Guiana in 1883. There's a lot of history in Robbie's High School. The school was established on the 5th of September 1916 and began under the bottom house of one of the pastors of the Presbyterian Church. Our school therefore had deep religious roots and despite it becoming a secular school leader, those religious values have helped to shape the quality of the students who grace its halls and classrooms. But four years after its establishment, a branch of the girls was opened. The school became co-educational in 1941 and remained so ever since. I mention these things because these deep roots of the school were the ones that helped nurture the students who attended Burbis High School. In my time, Burbis High School was no longer a religious school, but it did have values of discipline and good conduct. That is why, that is why I would still like today to see the teaching of religious values in school. We are losing some of that. Sometimes you used to have school concerts in the old auditorium. I'm sure everybody here uh, will remember the old auditorium. And uh, one, one of those concerts, I just want to share a quick moment of one of those concerts. Uh, we all know Miss George Thomas. She was the senior mistress, and she had said souvenir. Uh, she was my French teacher, and she says, I would like you to uh, sing a song at the concert. So I says, fine, why not? I mean, I'll sing a song uh, for uh, everybody in the, uh, in the hall. In those days, they had the, the sheepy shirt. My mother was a good seamstress, and she sewed the, the sheepy shirt for me. So I put on the sheepy shirt, and uh, nerve wracking. It was a nerve wracking experience for me to have to stand in front of a large audience, audience and go to the tune. But once I got through the tune, once I got through the first time, I knew that the showcase was for me. And yeah, right, what showcase? Not to this day, I remember those words of that song that I said that brought the house down. Y'all want to hear the song or what? You sure? I didn't drink my honey though. Not like this. Got a letter from Miami in the letter. Was a dollar, took the dollar, got some powder, put the powder on my body. I'm sure that I speak for everyone when I say that Burbage High School holds a special place in our hearts. I got a solid educational ground in Burbage High School before most of the student population was moved to New Amsterdam multilateral school. When I attended BHS, that was in transition. I remember when a new science lab was built to encourage the study of and improve the teaching of science. At the opening of the new lab, for the very first time, I recall seeing an helicopter land across from the school in the cricket ground. And who would emerge from it? LFS himself. He came to declare our new lab open. Shortly after the new lab opened, we all had to move over to the multilateral school. For me, Burmese High School is a transformative experience. It has shaped my character, made me a better person, and pushed me to be the man that I am today. I owe a great deal to the friends that I met and the teachers who selfishly nurtured our minds. It was at Burbage High School that I learned to play table tennis, a passion which I still retain today to many players in Guyana. It was at Burbage High School that I first took part in athletics. It was very good at it, representing both the school and Burbage. It is said that a friendship forged in, in high school and true for, for longer than any other place of your life. And that's true. We all have that. We all want to live that last five years in high school. It's one of the best five years we ever had. I mean, it's the uh, bonds of friends that we've met there is phenomenal, you know? Most of us migrated long before the era of social media. We did. We did not have the tools to connect as a, as a present generation does. But I'm also sure that most of us are still in touch with old friends and buddies of Harvey High School. We would not be the same without our teachers. By the way, our teachers were already in class. At BHS, we had excellent teachers. I still remember my, my former master, Mr. Andrew Bishop. 
He may probably be maybe say geology and minds of you know, the great man, you know. Miss uh, George Stallman, she was her uh, French, my French teacher, senior mistress. She went on to begin the head mistress of multilateral school. You know, she was a very uh, firm and strict, and she wanted to work with a heavy hand. But you know what? She imbued in us the importance of this thing. She went to great pains to ensure that there was no uh, deviation from the dress code and all the other rules of the school. This guy's Thomas really pushed me in, in uh, multilateral. You know, we all got to give a tree card, or in my cooking school, this guy's Thomas. So, I took three cards and I was playing in school, and Mr. Ruben Dash, uh, the senior master at the time, called us. And he said, straight to the principal office. I said, but well, this is expelled right now, we're going to get expelled here. Me and Francis Pierre, he used to go with us. So, uh, time to press the in front of Mr. Thomas, and she says, what is this game? So Mary, you brought this to school? He says, yes. He says, show to me. I said, Mr. Thomas, this is how it is. This white kid and that black hero is this black kid. He said, that's it? I says, yes. Yeah. He said, don't bring it back here. Go back to the class. Don't let me see it. Man, that was not a black kid. But she was a good teacher. You know? In those days, our teachers were more than teachers. They were our mentors, our guardians, outside the home, and they were also beacons of inspiration. In our innocence, we all had faults that were all the teachers. Bucci from Bojan, Joyce from Ms. Thomas, Olma, Papi from Ms. Armstrong. We all had names for teachers, but they helped to make us better citizens of the world. We all carry with us the spirit of Alma Mater. Wherever paths lead, that spirit guide us forward. Let us therefore enjoy this reunion. We cannot return to those wonderful days of school, but we sure as hell can recall them and all of us must have a grand time in doing so. And thank you guys for listening to me. Thank you.
all over the world, and we're all proud. We should be. I was, I'm happy to be a member of the board, and I'm hoping that the next union will be magnanimous. We're going to start from the bottom and make it real big. I, the, the group, the team that has been working on this started a couple of years ago, and they've done a phenomenal job considering the circumstances for and everything else. And um, especially Shane and Maradat and Saroj, I want to commend them because it's extremely difficult to bring people together from such a large radius area. What is it to bring together everybody? And they've done a, a, a remarkable job. So we want to compliment them. Thank you all. Thank you all.